Okay, an unboxed switch. So you got the power inlet, 230 volt or 110 if you're in the US. Um, so the serial number at the back and the MAC address. On the front side we have, so this is a 24 port switch, PoE switch. So you've got the 24 10 slash 100 slash 1 gig ports. And there are four uplink ports. These are 10 gig, uh, 10 gig uplink ports, four of them. And then on the left side, or on the right side, depending the way you look, we have some connections. So you've got a USB-C connection here at the bottom. Uh, this is for your serial connection uh, for configuring the switch. There is a U another USB connection here where you can connect some external storage uh, like a USB stick to, uh, to store your configs and stuff like that. There's this uh, little mode button. It's called, what's it called? LED mode button uh, that changes the behavior of the LEDs. And there is this embedded reset button uh, as well here at the bottom here. Um, you need a paper clip and that will reset your switch to factory default. So as said, so this is a 24 port uh, model. There's also a 48 po uh, port model, uh, either with or without PUE. And there is also a 12 port model. It's a nice and uh, shallow switch. It's not very deep. So it allows you to um, get this box installed in uh, you know, like like smaller closets. Okay, finally, the accessory bag. Okay, let me just unpack it. So we've got the rack mount kit. Two pieces, of course. There is a tie wrap. Um, this is probably either for your power cord or for your data cables. Um, for the rack mount kit, there's also some screws. So you got the black ones. They are the black ones are for mounting the mounting brackets onto the switch, and the silvery ones are for mounting onto the rack. And then finally, we've got these nice little rubbers. And they are, so if you are using the switch as a desktop model or tabletop, whatever, you can stick those to the bottom here. So there are, you can see some markings here, marking there, and then you can just stick those uh, onto the bottom of the switch. Okay, so that's the switch. Um, next is to um, power on the switch and um, see if we can get it configured. Okay, let's um, get this thing started. Power on the switch first, get the power cord. Oh dear, yeah, got it. And hook up the power. There's some noise at the beginning. Uh, so these are the, the fans that you hear. So they will be running at full speed when this when the switch is started up. But after like, you know, here, here you go. After like 10 seconds, uh, the fan speed goes down and it's a very nice and quiet switch. I will also connect um, a DAC cable to one of the 10 gig ports here. Uh, say port 25, there you go. And I will get my laptop. There you go, my laptop here. And hook up that laptop as well to the console. You can see that the switch is still booting. Oops, out of console. Out of USB here, so. Connect the USB here, and yeah, so it's extracting the image. And let's wait a, a while before the switch has been booted. Oh, 
Okay, the switch is initialized and booted. There you go. Um, now, when you log in for the first time, let me just do that. Um, there is no password on the switch. And um, so what you have to do is with the initial uh, login, you have to uh, assign a password to the admin user. You don't have to, you can hit the enter button twice. So there's no, there will be no password for, for the admin user, but you know, it's better to configure a password, which I will do uh, now. So I'll assign a password to the admin user. And now the, the admin user is configured. Uh, now the next step is to check um, whether I have some connectivity. So I have the, the deck cable connected to, as an uplink to the, to the network. And um, let me just uh, check whether there is connectivity. So what I'll do is I'll do a show interface, interface brief. And so what I can see here is that for interface 25, I have a DAC transceiver, but it says unsupported transceiver. So for some reason, the, the transceiver or the DAC cable is not recognized by the switch. What I can do is the, uh, the 6100 or the AOS CX switches in general uh, support uh, the unsupported transceiver, right? So what I can do is I can get into the terminal and uh, allow unsupported transceivers. Unsupported transceiver, enter, say yes. And now, so now this transceiver should be recognized. So if I do a show interface one slash one slash 25 um, you should be able to see that 1125 is up now and if I do a um, I'll just use the arrow up show interface brief you can now see that the interface is up so that's good we're good there um, now, next step is to configure an IP address because I want to be able to access the switch. Um, because the 6100 doesn't have an out-of-band management interface, so unlike the 62 and 63, well, and 6400, um, so the 61 is, is basically, it's a layer two uh, switch. It's, a, it's an entry-level switch, um, and this switch does not have an out-of-band management interface. So what that means is that you need to configure one of the VLANs uh, to allow, you know, to get IP connectivity to the switch. Um, so the default VLAN is VLAN 1, interface VLAN 1. So what I'll do is I'll configure an IP addre uh, address on interface VLAN 1. VLAN 1. And let me just do IP address 192.168. 8.0.100 slash 24. Okay, so that will be the IP address. And I should now be able to ping something that's on this on this VLAN, right? So for example, uh, the gateway. Dot one. Okay, good. Means that we have connectivity. That's good. Now the next thing to configure is obviously when we want to have remote access like SSH or uh, HTTPS access, we need to enable the SSH server and we need to enable the HTTPS server. Let's start with the SSH server. So SSH server, um, wait, exit first, <laughs> SSH server, uh, VRF. Now the 6100, uh, because it's a layer two switch, it doesn't have any 
uh, understanding of VRFs. However, because of the way CX is operating, it requires a VRF to be assigned. Basically, the 6100 only has one single VRF, which is the default VRF. So I'll just enter default. And now we've got the SSH server configured and enabled for the default VRF. We have to do the same for the HTTPS server, VRF default. And another thing, if we want to configure REST, so if we want to have access to the REST interface of the, uh, of the switch, uh, and if we want to have read-write access, so not just obtaining information, but also pushing information using the REST API. Um, so what we need to do then is we need to configure the uh, access mode and set it to read-write. Okay, so now we can read and we can write uh, using the API. And then obviously, finally, uh, writing the configuration would be uh, write memory. And so this, this kind of like concludes the initial configuration. What we can do now is we can start to configure the switch using either SSH or the web interface. And let's just do that. Uh, let me start with SSH. Let's see if we can SSH into the box. Yes, we can. Let's provide the credentials. Uh, let me just um, increase the font size a bit. So you can see that we're in, we're on the switch. So we can do a show running config can see that there is an initial configuration with the IP address HTTPS is configured and we can start configuring the switch through SSH Let's configure terminal put a question mark you can check out all the all the options that you have um, it's a it's an, an advanced layer 2 switch so there's no layer 3 configuration supported other than IP addresses on VLAN interfaces uh, other than that, there is a wide range of functionality and features. You can configure access lists, policies, um, port security with .1x or Mac authentication, spanning tree, VLANs, link aggregations. Um, so it's, it is an extensive set of, of uh, functions and features available on the 6100. Okay, let's move to the web interface. See if we can access the web interface. 0 0.100. It's HTTPS, so there's no certificate installed there. So we get this message. And there you go. Into the uh, web interface of the 6100 you get into the dashboard with all the uh, you know that which gives you like a high level overview of what's happening on the switch uh, you can get into the interfaces view uh, show some interface information uh, vlans you can actually uh, configure vlans here you can configure link aggregations uh, set up users uh, monitor your PoE usage and everything and there's also some system uh, tools uh, functionality available uh, things like um, making backups and checkpoints of your configuration you can do firmware upgrades from the web interface and in addition um, you may already know this uh, from the other switches there is also the swagger interface that we have for the rest apis so uh, you know you can obtain all that information using the swagger interface you get the firmware you know wh whatever whatever api calls you can make here so that's pretty cool and this concludes the unboxing installation and configuration of a 6100 I hope you liked the video and I hope to see you soon on this channel.